I found your parallel universe. Where's mine? My what? Hey friends, it's Sean from My Impossible, and it's time to review the feedback video for this group's very first remote viewing experiment. And I want to say hi to everyone who participated. We had people from Wyoming, Washington, Colorado, Utah, and Ontario. So thanks for participating. And as I said before in the earlier video, I'm not going to focus on where people missed, but just on the hits that people got. So if you see this and you, I didn't mention your notes or anything, it's just because maybe there wasn't a match there. But we're just going to learn by going through this. Um, the first thing I want to say, because anomalies always show up, they're not always, anomalies show up from time to time, and the very first one was when I got on site right at the beginning of the video, as you'll see here, there was a homeless man walking below the big blue bear, and he was saying something quite interesting. Let's listen. I found your parallel universe. Where's mine? So isn't that interesting? Someone shows up right at the beginning, just so spontaneously saying, I found your parallel universe, where's mine? You know, it sort of has this psychic, otherworldly quality to it. And just that that showed up right at the beginning of our very first experiment, I, I don't take that for granted. I think that's significant. So one set of notes that I found interesting, uh, someone wrote, for a second, I got an image of a pet store, but it wasn't that, bigger animals. And as you see here, um, you know, their brain or their mind could have been interpreting the data they were getting into something they could understand. And of course, we have a big blue bear looking in the windows. And if you've ever been to a pet store, all you have is puppy dogs looking out a window at you. And this looks like that. So I, I consider that a pretty good hit. And then someone sent me their set of notes, which I thought was really great because on the right, this person writes, like I was upstairs in a loft looking down, stairs on left, door window ahead, round table with flowers and chairs. And as you see here, I am upstairs. There is a staircase to my left. In fact, there's a staircase on either side of me. I'm looking down and across the way to the, to the bear from the inside. It was so cold that day. I was like, oh, the weather. Um, door, window ahead. And then the round table, there weren't round tables down below, but I ended up panning upward and you see those lights above, they look, well, they sort of look like UFOs, but that roundness there. And then to the left of this person's notes, they write, saw a person holding something dark and flat. And what's interesting here is with this drawing that the person made of a person holding something dark and flat, I don't know if they actually saw that or they saw something and the, the conscious mind interpreted it as that. And what I'm talking about, of course, is the theme of analytic overlay, or in my course, I call it ego guesswork, where your subconscious mind gets pieces of data and then your conscious mind tries to piece it together. Because if this person had just drawn something flat and dark, 
um, I think that would have been kind of a direct hit with the dark curtains that show up down below. That would be a really strong match. But the conscious mind gets in the way and tries to put things together. But maybe this person did perceive a person actually holding something. I, I don't know. But that's a theme here for everybody who took part. The analytical overlay or ego guesswork, as I refer to it in my course. That's something you want to understand going forward because when you understand it and learn how to work with it, it makes your psychic perception more accurate and uh, gives you more and gives you better instinct about how to interpret what you're receiving. So even though I said I don't want to talk about where people missed, I do want to talk about it when it occurs as an anomaly because two people um, refer to something that wasn't there at the target location. One person wrote the image of someone fishing in a lake came to mind. And then someone else wrote, uh, I felt like the location was something that looked like a wooden fishing lodge. So the issue of fishing comes up with two separate remote viewers and either neither one of those connected with the target site in, in that sentence about fishing, they both picked up fishing. Why is that? Is it because there was a bear image and somehow their conscious mind took that and the bear made them think of the forest or the woods and then they thought about fishing? Do they have fishing in their personal history? So it's something interesting to think about. Did a bear appear in their mind when they thought about someone fishing? Who knows? So I'm just mentioning this now as an educational component, but I won't go on like this in, in future videos unless it's really, unless you like it. So let me know if you like this kind of feedback. So again, I just wanna thank you all for participating and we'll have another target set up probably in a couple of weeks. So just watch the announcements that come up in this group page. Uh, if you didn't participate and you're new to the group, you want to sign up, read the about section. There's rules and, and what this group is about. And of course, if you really need a good training course in remote viewing, I recommend mine at mindpossiblecourses.com. All right, thanks.